So I think the biggest question in everyone's mind, right? Like how many of you are worried about what job will you take up in the next five years and whether that job will even exist, just from a show of hands. Okay, so 50% of the room is worried. I'm assuming 50% is not. So let's see if we can clear that confusion out a bit. So to predict the impact of generative AI, right, over the next couple of years, we probably need to do a bit of digging into the past and see, see how it led to this. We also need a little bit of economics, so bear with me when we kind of go through how will Gen AI actually impact the way the workforce ends up, what our jobs will look like. So this is a very interesting economic theorem. It's called Baumil's cost disease, right? And that's the root of it's going to help us decipher what's going to happen. It's actually super interesting. So in 1960, William Baumil was an economist who theorized that productivity gains across different sectors tend to have different impacts from a technology aspect, right? What that means is, um, let me give you an example, right? Because this sounds a little bit of a mouthful. Across different sectors, right? So you take healthcare, you take manufacturing. When tech comes in, there are different productivity gains for different people, right? So here's a, here's a classic example. Right? In the 1800s, there's someone who's manufacturing pins. So let's call him Bobby. Uh, Bobby could do about 100 pins in about a day, right? That's how much you could manufacture. Kind of use tooling, a little bit of hands. Let's say there's a teacher, Jonathan. He could do about 30 students a day, right? So if he's teaching these students for the entire day, could safely train about or teach 30 students in a day, right? And then, you know, you had the Industrial Revolution, tech came about. So this same Bobby can now do 10,000 pins in a day, right? Productivity gain of 100x because of machinery, tooling, better technology that's come in. The teacher, Jonathan, on the other hand, still can only teach 30 students a day, right? There's been no productivity gain there because essentially it's a very human art form, right? It can't be replaced by tech that easily. But when you look at that, right, that's an interesting conundrum, right? So imagine, right, my productivity has gone 100x, so naturally my salary is going to go up, right? Because I'm going to give so much more output to the world. But what happens to the human side of things, right? What happens to the teacher, the doctor, the nurse, who are doing things where their productivity is not going up? So Baumil theorized and actually studied and realized that these salaries will also go up. The reason is because if these salaries don't go up, Every doctor, every teacher out there will be like, why am I doing this profession, right? If a pin manufacturer, if a shoe manufacturer is earning in a factory 10x more than me, I'll probably do that instead. And you'll have a massive shortage of teachers and doctors. So therefore, both salaries will go up. So I think you can actually feel a little safe and happy that it's not like the human jobs are actually going to suffer just because there's massive productivity somewhere else. It's like a string quartet, right? You can have, it still takes exactly 60 minutes for a performance or a concert, back from the 1800s right to 2025, right? That's not changed in terms of productivity timeline. Uh, it's gotten a lot, lot more expensive, right? So musician time is valued at a much higher, proving out the theorem exists. Although for some, it also feels a little longer, uh, considering those that don't have the year for it. So this is the equation, right? You have coders that are now going to get, because of Gen AI, right? let's apply this to today's day and age, what that's going to look like. Coders are going to go from 1x to 10x productivity, right? We're already seeing that code is being written by AI with humans interve in, like intervening in a bit, in a sense. But they're actually becoming far, far, far more productive, right? Similarly, if you're like a senior lawyer, right, they're going to be able to do research of 10 cases where it used to take them time to do one, right? Figure out the case laws, figure out the argument, read all the documentation that's submitted. So they're going to see a 10x productivity increase. But that's a good thing because their salaries are going to go up, not down, because the value that they bring is going to go up. There's a little bit of a catch to it. I'm going to come to that. But on the other side, when a doctor becomes 1x to 1.5x, right, a surgeon becomes slightly more productive, or a teacher that's using AI to, let's say, grade assignments, she's still going to be most of the time in the class, right? He or he. It's going to be 1x to probably 1.5x. They're also going to see that knock-on effect of generative AI, but in a positive sense. Now, one of the things is that, you know, when suddenly you're saying, okay, I'm going to produce a lot more software, right? I'm going to produce a lot more pins. I'm going to produce a lot of more things because technology is enabling me to do it. I'm going to produce a lot more generated images. Doesn't that mean the market will get saturated, right? That's what everyone thinks, right? That if there's a certain amount of work and now there's so much more production, suddenly I'm not going to need a lot of this stuff, right? Like I'm going to need much lesser coders because now each coder is 10x. But that's not true, actually. If you go back in time, right, and you look at a house in the 1900s, 
Like this is the kind of stuff they had, right? Like a table, a chair. And now you look at a house in 2025 or a house in the 2000s, they have a lot of stuff, right? So automatically, we take care of that, right? As our incomes grow, and as the availability of things outside are, are much more available or cheaper, we end up consuming a lot more, right? A household which would have maybe two shirts for each member, like, or two dresses for each member, is now having like 10, 20, 30 dresses, right? In, to, in 2000, where everyone would have just one device, we have like six gadgets for, per person. So that consumption rate automatically escalates as our lives get better. So your lives are going to definitely get better. It's through sales laws. And it's going to allow you to consume a crazy amount of stuff and have access to a crazy amount of things. But like I said, there's one little catch to it, right? Mediocrity is going to get punished very, very severely, right? Because, I, like, like you saw in the previous equation, right? a coder has gone from 1x to 10x, right? Productivity. But those are the best coders I'm talking about. If you're a mediocre coder and your productivity goes from 1x to 2x, you're going to get punished in the market, right? Because if you're not able to use generative AI to enhance your efficiency, you're going to be a very low ROI productivity gain for the market. And they're going to punish you, right? You're going to get a lower salary. You're probably not going to get a job. Similarly for the lawyer example that I gave, right? Today, if a, if a, like if a teacher can still only teach 30 students per day, right? That's like, it's a fundamental law. Like a teacher cannot accelerate her learning towards students, right? It's a human process, it's a contact process. Some acceleration maybe, but not really. A student, on the other hand, can write one essay a day, right? This was in 2020, uh, or in times when I studied. For you guys, the expectation is 10 essays a day, right? Because you can use AI, you can use Chad GPT, you can use Anthropic, you can punch out essays very quickly, right? Maybe your, your school's plagiarism system might not allow it, but internal productivity exists, right, for you to, you to boost. So that's where the expectation levels are going to rise, right? You're going to see that in assignments as well. Suddenly, teachers are going to accept much better quality assignments and a much better quality thought process from students than they ever did before. Because they're like, now you have AI to assist you to do the research, to do the argument. In our times, it used to be, you know, like writing a, a thesis on maths. It used to be a very complicated process because the references weren't there. Now an AI can have a smart interaction with you and give you ideas very, very quickly. So therefore, you have to be very careful of that mediocrity challenge that your jobs are going to be safe, right? There will be coders that are going to deliver. There will be people with human level skills that are going to deliver. But mediocrity for productivity gained jobs, right? Where the productivity gain is going to be massive, the bar is going to rise very, very fast, very, very significantly. And that's what you need to focus on when you're thinking about your career and your future. So there's also another catch to this, right? Uh, while everything looked great so far, right? We said nothing's going to change. Uh, you know, salaries are going to go up. Consumption is going to go up. You're going to get a lot more things. Uh, everyone's fine, both the human-centric jobs plus the productivity gain jobs. There are going to be a few areas where jobs will become obsolete, right? It's always been the case. Someone who would ride a horse, a, a horse whip manufacturer, their jobs became obsolete very quickly in the past generation. So let's take a look at what's going to get obsolete in this generation and the next couple of years. So the number one thing, right, uh, we've all seen this with the capability of video models being able to generate such phenomenal quality at scale, right? I'm going to show you a video, um, have a look at it, and when we actually sent out this proposal to shoot an ad like this, we got a quotation of saying that this will take about six months and about two hundred to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to do it. Right? Imagine waiting three to six months and two hundred and two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to do it. Uh, now able to generate something. This is an ad for a generative AI. So you're gonna get a glimpse of what the future holds with this one. So that's what your future is going to look like when it comes to shooting, right? Imagine, right, being able to generate an entire ad with multiple angles, multiple scripts, multiple characters in about four to five hours' time. Right? So where the productivity gain or the next best alternative is far, far superior than the existing approach, those are areas which will either get obsolete 
or we'll find other forms of requirement, right? So it's kind of like what happened to portraits. Everyone used to get a self-portrait made. Now with the advent of the camera, you could take like a selfie in real time, right, and add filters to it. So that art kind of changed, right? It became more of an art that people long for, but it was no longer a mainstream requirement in the industry that, okay, everyone needs a portrait done. The same thing is going to happen with some of these industries. Another thing that's going to happen, right, so when mediocrity gets punished, there's another great leveler that's going to come as well, right? People who are below the ladder, when they compete with people on top of the ladder, they're going to be able to compete at an equal footing. I'm going to show you an example of this. So we'll try a live demo. Hopefully the internet and everything works out well. But imagine if I'm working in a corporate job, right? And my language skills aren't that great, right? Um, I'm using a project management tool. My boss has come and said, generate this report for me and you know, give it to me now. Compare that to maybe a great English-speaking person who knows the project management tools. In this case, we're going to use Jira as an example. And we're going to kind of compare how these two would pan out. Hello? Hello. Um, I'm good. Uh, uh, Marathi mein baat kar sakte ho? Meri Hindi itni achhi nahi hai. Nakkeech. Nakki, krupya tum ja email ID sanga, tiawar mi ahawal pakhavel. Acha, Punjabi aati hai? Hanji, me Punjabi bhi bol sakti hai. Apni email ID da so. Me uthe report bej dini. Acha, ne Gujarati? Gujarati aati? Ha, mane Gujarati avre che. Tamharo email ID apo. Mare tamne tya report moklu voche. Acha, acha, me actually international student too, to mujhe ab Spanish, do you know Spanish? Yes, I do speak Spanish. Can you speak to me in Spanish? Claro. And French? Do you know French? Yes, I... Okay, go ahead and say some French to me. D'accord. Pourriez-vous me donner votre adresse électronique pour que je puisse vous envoyer le rapport? And uh, someone requested Bengali. So Bengali, can you speak Bengali? J. Ami. Continue in Bengali. Chhoti katse. Apni ki apnar email thikana deben jate ami report pathate pari. Acha okay. So um, I actually mujhe ek report chahiye thi. Mere Jira project management system mein jao aur usme se you know jo kisne kitna kam kia kon kon free hai. Wo mujhe apne boss ko bejni hai. Mujhe wo email kar sakte ho. Bilkul. Krupya, aap mujhe us email ID ka pata de, jis par aap... Mera email ID hai abhinav at fluid.ai. Dhanyavad. Aap ka report tayyar karke, abhinav at fluid.ai par bhej rahi hoon. Give me a second. I am working on it. Report bhej di gai hai. Krupya, check kare, aur agar ko... Okay, thank you. So I have my report in, zero minutes in. It's my, let me cut her off, otherwise she'll keep thanking me. Uh, <laughs> uh, she sent me my report, all my work logs, who's worked how much, who's free, uh, this person can be reassigned, this person's free shortly, and I can send this to my boss, right? So imagine me as a worker compared to, yeah, sorry, I thought it was coming. So uh, imagine me as a worker who's got this email straight in, uh, and now, you know, I'm at level with someone who speaks great English, uses great project management tools, has a lot of experience, right? So while AI is going to make mediocrity a challenge, it's also going to be a great leveler. And the last thing I wanted to leave you with, right? So these are some of the jobs, customer support agents, paralegal research, junior analysts, translators. Uh, they're going to be in for a bit of a trouble, right? And the number one use case for chat GPT, does anyone know? What's the number one use case? 
school essays I heard. <laughs> Math homework. Okay, apart from the homework side, it's actually uh, it's coding, right? right? Everyone thinks these. The number one use case for chat GPT is actually a personal therapist. That's the number one thing people use it for, right? And you would never think therapist as a job is going to get replaced. It's actually still not, because you need therapy, and you need therapists. But it's going to be that first level therapist for everyone. OK, um, authors, right? This is a book we wrote. It's called Bridging the AI Gap. It's written completely by an AI, first AI book to become an international bestseller. Last thing, codified knowledge is going to become less focused and more tacit expertise. But why has Gen AI not picked up in certain areas, right? I'm going to leave you with this last thing. You have to start at this arrow and end up at this arrow. As soon as you solve it, raise your hand, right? Time starts now. We'll see how fast the entire group is. OK? We've had two hands. Two hands out of 100. Three hands, four hands. OK? Not bad. So this is a problem, right? I said start from this arrow, end from this arrow. I feel these, the, these two people got it. But I didn't say solve the maze. I didn't say go through a maze, right? We as humans have this tendency that when we see a problem that we've solved before, no matter how complicated the solution, we like going through it, right? And that's called the status quo bias. And this is why Genia is widely adopted in certain areas, but not in others. The thing is, though, that, that gap shrinks very quickly, right? So it's going to take about two years, three years maybe, and then it's going to be everyone using it. So get ready for the future and wish everyone all the best. Thank you.